All right, my name is John, J-O-H-N, Marks, M-A-R-X, and I'm serious about reaching out to me on LinkedIn. I worked at Linux Academy before coming to GitHub, and uh, so I'm used to working with students in cyberspace. It's pretty cool. It's rewarding. Um, this particular talk is about GitHub package registry, but I'm going to do it against a backdrop of GitHub's new release as of the 8th. Of August, we released actions for CI/CD pipelines. So the most effective way to implement the package registry will be through actions. Um, let's talk a minute about fragmented DevOps pipelines. You've got your version control system on the left. You've got continuous CI tooling. You've got security and quality testing. You've got build automation. You've got deployment tooling. And then you've got a dynamic infrastructure that is becoming more dynamic by the day as we do elastic clouds and we do Kubernetes where you have ephemeral instances that come into being and go out of being. Uh, now you see them, now you don't. So if we take that tooling pipeline, if you will, and we consider the role of the repo and you think about what a package registry is going to do for you, I know I'm exaggerating here a little bit, but you've got your open source repo wherever you're pulling your third party libraries from. Some people cleanse those if they're in a secure supply chain, they'll actually onboard them and scan them and make sure they remediate vulnerabilities so that as the builds are pulling from that, they're pulling from clean repositories. You've got your application source. Once you've gone through your build automation, you've got your build artifacts. Those build artifacts in raw form may be put into a package registry format, depending on the language you're using and the type of package installer that you're using. Those may be staged in yet another place. Then you've got the infrastructure. So you've got configuration management playbooks, whether you're using Ansible, Chef, Puppet, lots of YAML files. Then you've got Kubernetes clusters. And so when I, as a DevOps practitioner, who was formerly with Red Hat, and I've done a lot of Kubernetes. When I ran across GitOps, I was like, this is pretty cool. We're going to put the infrastructure and the application source code in the same repo. And so I'm a big GitOps fan. And just to illustrate what I'm talking about, if you haven't had an opportunity to see any of the workshops here on GitOps, Basically, here's your infinity loop where you have your iterations on the development side, your practice of continuous integration, and then you have your release gating if you're in a regulated environment there in the center, your automated deployment, you're going into some type of cloud atmosphere, operations is iterating through whatever they're doing in the engineering and ops side, you've got your key performance indicator feedback for an adaption loop running into your continuous improvement process, starting the process all over again on the left. The cool thing about GitOps is that you're able to, instead of having multiple repos and a lot of files in a lot of different places, you have the opportunity to put it in the same as your source code repo, and you can version all of your infrastructure definition along with your application source code. So I'm saying that this is a simplified pipeline. I've got kind of a square around the part that GitHub is able to do for you now, and we've added the GitHub actions there and the package registry. Obviously, your build automation would still be run from the workflow. We'll spin up instances, launch Maven, launch various compiles, whatever type of build automation you have. Still integrate with Jenkins very, very seamlessly and nicely. So none of that changes unless you want to change it. But by introducing package actions in the package registry, you have an opportunity to have that one place for these objects. That also helps your security because everywhere a server is talking to another server in any of your pipelines, that is a potential attack vector. So it's another place that you have to have some form of authentication, some form of resilience because of the security. By putting all of these things in that little purple box, you only have one form of identity management. I can already tell I'm going way too slow. So um, when you have infrastructure as 
code, it adds that GitOps dimension to what's happening within the GitHub platform. So the package registry in terms of the value proposition, use the same login for your code and your packages, so you simplify your identity and access management. Discover public and private packages all in one place, whether they're just consumed internally or you're part of an open source project and serving an entire community. Get fast and reliable downloads via our global CDN, so everything's gonna come down and operate just as it does with the GitHub Cloud now. Integrate with your workflows. So if you do have Jenkins Pipelines, Blue Ocean, whatever you're using, you're able to integrate that through the Actions framework. Manage permissions in one place, similar to the login, but when you think about what we're doing now, a lot of organizations have a separation of responsibility between your operations teams and your development teams. So even though they're in the same repository, you will have varied permissions on who can edit those YAML files that define the Kubernetes cloud infrastructure versus who can change application source code, obviously. So that's what we're talking about there. Learn details from package insights, the, the increased visibility, but then also the dashboard as to how many people are pulling down the packages, what kinds of things are going on with your overall build pipeline. So this is the video on actions that I wanted to add. It's two minutes, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A. We recently updated GitHub Actions with a lot of new CI CD capabilities. So let me show a few of those to you now. As soon as I click on Actions, we've automatically determined that I'm using JavaScript in this repository. So we've suggested that I set up CI CD with Node, and we have this sample file to go ahead and get you started. As you would imagine, we have sample workflow files for just about every language and runtime out there. This just shows a few of them. But in addition to Actions, you can do more than CI CD. You can automate any GitHub events. There can be a workflow that fires whenever someone's added to a repository, a new issue is created, or even there's a comment on a repository, or maybe a package was updated in GitHub Package Registry. So here are a couple of those right now, greeting a new contributor or automatically labeling an issue. So let's go over here and automatically set up CI CD. So I'll click here. What you'll notice is that automatically created a YAML file in my repo that specifies the details of that workflow. So now let's scroll down and actually make this a matrix build. One of the cool things about a matrix build and about GitHub Actions is it can perform CI CD across Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. And these will all be running at the same time. So we'll go ahead and make an edit there and commit this file to a new branch. I'm going to create a new pull request. And what you'll notice is right here in the merge box, we've immediately started to kick off all of those different CI runs. So you can see it's running on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. I can click over on the Checks tab, and we have a brand new live streaming logs experience. So you can see the logs starting to come in now with color coding, showing all of my test results, all right there directly in the GitHub experience right in my pull request. So that's a very brief video. Let me go to this mic. Check, 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 check. Okay, so that's a very brief video showing actions. Again, we just announced it for beta August 8th. Um, the package registry is a separate schedule for general availability. If you go ahead and sign up for the beta on that, you're likely to be queued in because the package registry has been out longer. Um, and there is a multitude of ways with or without actions um, to go ahead and start putting packages into the package registry. As far as third party tooling for establishing security, you know, notary processes to uh, apply signatures to packages for security aspects. Um, you're able to do that with the third-party tooling that you're utilizing now. It's a very, very open uh, framework that's been implemented. And again, it's just um, GitHub's way of adding value to the overall GitHub ecosystem. There is no separate cost for any of these additional capabilities. Uh, I know that's true of Actions. I think it's true of Package Registry. So. Um, it's something that, that we're doing to add to the value stream that GitHub is able to provide. 
Any questions? Anything I haven't covered? I know it's been quick. I just had 15 minutes. Yes, sir. There, yes, there, there will be an SDK and there will be published API specs. Some of them may be out there now. Yes? Mm -hmm. Depending on what build tool you are using, you will want your logs or your artifacts, or if you're just wanting the summarization through an issue, you'll have to put some type of uh, entry into your workflow so that you're capturing that off. Again, it could be something that's produced by the third-party tool that you go back and look at later. If I was using Jenkins Blue Ocean, for example, I could see everything in Blue Ocean. But if you wanted to put Maven native into an actions workflow, then you could archive those logs or create you know, a script that summarizes what's occurred and puts that into a, a summarized log. Um, the, the way actions is working, and I'm kind of glad you, you said that, is we're open sourcing the development of actions. We're taking all the actions we develop and putting them in a repo that is open sourced and all of our ecosystem partners are writing actions and they're open sourcing theirs. So there will be thousands if not millions of actions that you can pull from in the catalog for the mainline tooling. I'm sure there's going to be esoteric cases that won't be taken care of but it's JavaScript so you can probably throw it together pretty quickly. Yes, sir. Expo building? Xcode. We do have the ability to spin up an OSX instance within the workflow. And by the way, all of these instances that are being spun up um, that are supported for the CICD activity are hosted by us. And again, no further charge. Um, if your Xcode is one of the requirements for the instance, then you would simply include in your workflow what's necessary to stage the libraries to support it. I did a Ruby uh, workflow. I had to do a gem update and run rake, you know, pretty much like I would do if I was building Ruby on any other platform. Yes, sir. There is a, a <laughs> I need to be careful here. I'm, I'm fairly new to GitHub, and I know that there are a lot of people asking about its availability. I've encouraged people to go by the booth and get scanned so that you can get an official answer um, to that question. I do not have that schedule. In fact, I can't even tell you if it's in the cards. I pretty sure it is, but I may be misspeaking, so I'd rather you get that straight from someone else with GitHub. Yes, sir. The cloud uh, backbone of what we're doing in the workflow is transparent to the end user. Um, the cost to do whatever is being done is published on the website and metered appropriately. Um, we at GitHub are supporting every cloud, so you don't have any Azure lock-in. Do I think it's running in Azure now? Yes, I do. But does that matter to you as an end user? I don't think it will affect you. The team that did Azure DevOps has been engineering with us on actions. So what you see in Azure DevOps pipelines is very similar to what you're going to see in capabilities and actions, but we're open sourcing it, multi-cloud and support for hybrid cloud. Others? OK. I looked at Jenkins X, and um, I'm intrigued by everything going on there. I think there is an ease of integration, just like we've had webhooks um, 
that have supported Jenkins in the past, pretty much in a very simple way, and Jenkins has had plugins. I think the integration between Jenkins and Actions will be simpler because of the Node.js approach, and we basically have an on event, so any event that fires in GitHub can kick off the workflow. So I don't expect any hindrance to integration with the third-party tooling of your choice. That is one of our selling points. We're not trying to come in like a tool and says, we're end-to-end -end DevOps, you know, get rid of all your other tooling. We're trying to live nicely with the ecosystem and respect our clients' choices and the investments they've made in the tooling that they've already implemented. At the same time, we want to add value, reduce cost, increase simplicity, and add security benefits as we continue to engineer our product set. Anybody else? I think I need to be respectful of the next speaker. You guys have been uh, perfect. It's 2.59, so thank you. I appreciate you coming and hearing what we have to say.